welcome back. We are now on episode six. I can't believe we've made it this far. How are you doing, Matt? I'm doing pretty good. Yeah, episode six. This is good. We've made it past the average number of podcasts when they stop. It's five. All right. <laughs> yeah. So how's it going in Canada? Are you guys freezing? You know what? It's been really cold. We've had snow on the ground. Um, I've been traveling for work, and last week I went to Fort McMurray, and it was nicer in northeastern Alberta than it was in Edmonton. What? Yeah, we've had this Arctic front that came down from the Yukon. It dropped into northern BC and then just shuffled out east towards us. So um, it looks like we're going to be out of it soon, but uh, welcome to Canada. September and freezing cold. Well, I'll tell you today, I had a pretty good time. I actually went to uh, a lake in Hollywood. I don't know if you know this, but over by the Hollywood sign, there's a giant lake. Oh, yeah. People have a house around and uh, they have a hiking trail. So I went and did that. And there's a suicide house there that's really interesting. What, what's it's that this, mean? It's this old Japanese house that has, you know, kind of that really cool tile on the top. And yeah. uh, it overlooks the lake and the Hollywood sign. And the last person that owned it committed suicide. And so it's been on the market now for two years. Nobody will buy it. And then we found out, we found out from a neighbor that the people before that committed suicide and oh. the people before that as well. So three people in a row, they didn't know each other. They were all owners of the property, killed themselves in the house, like within the last 20 years. So that Is might there be an old first. burial ground there? <laughs> <laughs> Indian burial ground. Ah! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Poltergeist was filmed here in the valley, so maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. But uh, on to technology, man. We have a lot to talk about. The new iPhone XS and XS Max. The 10X. Sorry. That's right. Yeah. yeah. It is the 10. Look at me. I sound like I'm five years behind. <laughs> but holy cow, that price is crazy. I heard uh, for the best one for the Max, it's going to be like $1,500 American, right? What is that equal in Canadian dollars? It is one dollar shy of two thousand bucks. It's almost like Apple chose to be just under that, like one thousand nine hundred ninety nine Canadian dollars. Like that's just crazy, Dan. So you're gonna spend two thousand dollars for a phone? Not me. No. <laughs> How do you think people are gonna shell this out? Like that is a lot of money. That's like tuition for one semester at uh, a university in Canada, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yay for cheap tuition in Canada. It's a little bit more expensive now. But, yeah, I mean, that's a lot of money. And, you know, like, how much did you pay for your computer, for your MacBook? I mean, Less than that. To put that into a phone, uh, I feel like that's that's just too much. But what's interesting is Tim Cook started defending himself the, the day after they announced the 10s Max. And uh, this is what he says. He says, most people will make a deal with their phone carrier. And he figures that you pay about $30 a month to your phone carrier for the price of the phone. And then on top of that, they'll add whatever services you're buying from them. And he says, that's only $1 a day. Now, I don't know how Tim Cook does math. <laughs> but when I broke it down, I thought, the average person keeps their phone for two years. And I personally keep it a little bit longer, um, but I think it's probably two years. And when I did the math, fifteen hundred bucks comes out to about three dollars and seventy cents a day. That's insane. That's like yeah. a McDonald's meal every day just for your phone, right? <laughs> well, or super thing. grande, you know, <laughs> latte, latte, whatever, whatever. people <laughs> yeah. drink. I just drink water. Um, I was gonna say though. That is really expensive, and if you think about it, it's a lot like leasing a car, right? Like, it seems yeah. like, oh, I'm going to have this Mercedes, and it's only $300 a month. Well, it's not really yours, right? I mean, you drive it off the lot. It's really, you're renting the car from the car company, and uh, you can't do over a certain number of miles, and uh, it's it's terrible. You're getting fleeced, right? So just like this with the phones, you think it's yours. You drop it in the toilet. Guess what? You know, you're out 1500 bucks unless you have Apple Care. Hey, they're waterproof now, so I mean, okay. at least that's good. But just thinking about leasing a phone, I mean, that's ridiculous. Maybe the next step is a mortgage. 
Right. Maybe I'm... we should take out 30-year mortgages. <laughs> Maybe they'll let us fix the interest rate at 4.5%. <laughs> yeah. $2,000 is a lot of money for a phone, especially because by the time you pay it off in two years, the next biggest thing is going to come out, and you're not even going to want it anymore. So I, I agree. Now, Dan, I know you love the SE, and I saw this coming. The SE is dead. Yeah, so, they're not doing the SE. The iPhone no. 6 and the 6S is gone. The 10 um, is and, gone, too. You I can't even buy the 10. I think that was wise of them because that's what I was going to do. I don't know about you, but I like to buy last year's model for a cheaper discount. Well, guess what? You can't do that anymore because it's not no. there to buy unless you go on eBay. But uh, it's, you can't buy a new one from the source anymore. And uh, that's why they did the R. The XR is basically, or the 10R is basically their answer. Um, to that. So what do you think? You've now seen it. You've seen videos. You probably haven't held one, but since your next phone's going to be an Apple phone, um, are you happy with the form factor? Now you're going to have to deal with a notch. There's no getting away from the notch unless you buy a seven, which I believe they, or maybe it's the eight they're still selling. So yeah. would you go with a, a clunkier, older phone that's notchless or a phone that's the exact same height and width, but a little bit thinner and way bigger screen real estate, which, but you deal with the notch. What do you think? Oh man, I'm going to have to deal with the notch. I'll tell you what, Matt, um, two days ago I was dealing with notch hell because I was <laughs> trying to reprogram my game, uh, my mobile game for the notch. And I thought it would be easy. I mean, I'm sure there's, a ton of developers online that have run into the same problem I have using Unity and then needing to do space at the top for a notch. So I thought it would be an easy fix, maybe a patch I could plug into Unity. That's the program I use to program my games. It took me six hours of complicated math. I was doing the Pythagorean <laughs> theorem from seventh grade just hey, to figure out. <laughs> seventh grade get... math is useful. <laughs> yes. Because the problem is all the screens are so different. And it's funny, one thing that we're not talking about is the aspect ratio of the 10 is actually different. It's a little bit skinnier than the other ones. And so all of my tiles for my game wouldn't fit properly on it, not just the notch, but just the shape of it. Um, if you've noticed the aspect ratio of, of the iPhones, ever since the, the 5S, it's always been the same up until the 10. And so everything's really changed. Am I frustrated? Yes. Would I buy a new one? Of course. <laughs> of course. We're going to donate money we're to the cult of Apple. I'll tell you one thing I would be interested in buying, though, is that new Apple Watch. Um, for $399, a um, little bit bigger screen, smaller bezel, uh, longer battery life. Um, I think they look pretty slick. Um, I like the idea of being at work and just looking and glancing at my watch and, and seeing a text message not being disruptive by pulling out my phone. I think that would be neat. Mm -hmm. um, you've got uh, a Fitbit, right? Are you pretty satisfied with that? I do have a Fitbit. Oh, um, you know what? I do have a Fitbit. I like what it does. It's very simple. Um, I think Fitbit does an amazing job with their software as far as the health app side of things. Um, I also really like the... Um, challenges that they have, and a lot of people I know have Fitbits. Way more people that I know have Fitbits than they have Apple Watches. Um, but I got to tell you, Dan, uh, I think the star of the announcement that happened last Thursday was the Apple Watch Series 4. I uh, even, uh, I wouldn't say I'm an Apple hater, but I'm not an Apple lover like I used to be. I'm almost like that spurned lover that now is kind of <laughs> uh, anti-Apple. <laughs> that watch is hot. I'm going to tell you, it's beautiful. I love the screen on it. I think it would be great. I also love how it's got speakers. It's now 50% louder than the Series 3. And it, it's like a Dick Tracy watch where you can now actually carry on a conversation, a phone conversation on your watch without having to bring your big giant 10s Max phone with you when you're going to the gym or working out. Um, however, that being said, I got a question for you. Okay. They say the battery life is even better and it's now 18 hours. Is wow. 18 hours enough? Right? I, I think so. I mean, as long as you're plugging it in every day, right? 
Yeah, you got to plug it in every day. And um, here's the problem with that, though. And we could talk a lot about how to extend battery life when you've got lithium ion uh, in your watch or your phone. It's actually not healthy to leave your watch or your phone plugged in once it's fully charged. And uh, if you're going to do that, you're going to plug it in overnight. And of course, it's going to stay plugged in until you wake up and, and take it off. So uh, I think that's part of the reason why we replace our phones so much, at least for me, and we've talked about this in the past, it's battery life. Now, um, 18 hours, I'd love to see 24. Uh, I rarely stay up 18 hours, but it's not unheard of. 24 is a little bit harder to do, but if you're traveling, uh, if you're flying across to Europe or something like that, you're going to want something that's got a little bit more staying power than 18 hours. My Fitbit lasts four days. Now, granted, I don't have a beautiful color display with retina display on it or anything like that, but at least I can get four days out of it and I don't have to worry. And you can um, still get your text messages with it too, right? I do. I get text messages. I get notifications that somebody's calling me. Uh, I can't reply uh, on my Fitbit. I know the Aria, which is the the latest version that came out, and it's uh, it looks a lot like the uh, the old Pebble watches because mm -hmm. Fitbit purchased Pebble. Uh, I think it's a great watch. I probably think it's one of the better watches you can buy right now, uh, as long as you're okay with not having GPS in it. Uh, it's a great price, and of course, it's got the Fitbit ecosystem. But Dan, that Apple Watch Series 4 is a sexy beast. Well, I think my favorite story from you about your Fitbit is that lady that you know that lost like 50 pounds because she was competing with you. Oh. Tell us the story about that and about how she'd wake up. Yeah, she's a good friend of mine, and uh, you know, she was extremely competitive, and she did. She lost a lot of weight. It wasn't like she was overweight to start with, but she just got trim. And we would get in these Fitbit competitions, which I know you can do with just about any kind of health device. And um, I would usually sync at the end of the day, and all my data would go to the Fitbit servers. And if it was 11 o'clock at night, my phone would start buzzing because my friend would get on the treadmill at 11 o'clock just to beat me. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so that's great. Well, one so, thing I like about Fitbit, though, is that you can do it with your Android friends. You can do it with yes. your iPhone friends. I mean, with the Apple Watch, if you've got friends on it, it's just in the Apple ecosystem, right? Absolutely. I, I like that about Fitbit. I, I hope they can be competitive with Apple. I hope Android can be competitive with Apple. We have these new Qualcomm trips that are coming out for um, Android Wear. Mm -hmm. And uh, if those chips don't make great improvements, I think Android Wear could be dead. I think Apple and Fitbit will grab just about everything out there they can. Android Wear is great from what I can tell and what I've seen. It's just that uh, it's got that Android problem of having so many people making devices for it that it's hard to get the uh, coverage, the advertising, and um, I, I, I think they're in trouble unless these Qualcomm chips can make something special that can at least match the iPhone Series 4 in specifications or give me a better battery. If you can give me a battery that will last two days and give me something equivalent to the Series 3, I'll choose that over a Series 4. Well, wasn't it interesting to find out that Google was kind of backing off of making even Android tablets for a while, and we thought forever that it was going to be neck and neck between them and Apple, and they just said, this isn't profitable anymore, and they don't really release tablets anymore. I wonder if the same thing is going to happen for the watch. Yeah, isn't that interesting? Um, because we used to have, was it called the Nexus phones, and then their their tablets, and you know, we thought they were pretty good, but then they just backed off and the tablet has disappeared. In fact, even Samsung uh, doesn't release as regularly their tablets anymore. Um, I feel like tablets are dropping off. I don't have any empirical data to back up that statement right now. Um, maybe it's something we can follow up with next week, but it really looks like even iPads are dropping off and Apple's not focusing on them. The attention's all on these phones getting bigger 
So maybe these phablets are replacing our iPads. In- That's exactly what's happening. I mean, I, I really never understood the point of a tablet unless you wanted to watch Netflix on it. You know, I mean, you can do everything on your phone. And if your phone has a bigger screen, why would you want to pay for another device that just gets old in two years and then you have to replace again? I, I, I've never understood it. Yeah, I, I remember when my phone was so small, an iPad was great. Uh, I, wow, look at all this real estate. And I was taking my iPad to meetings, so school board meetings, church meetings, things that I wanted to take notes on. And it was like a little computer. Well, now we have computers that are basically the size of a tablet, just like I have my uh, Windows uh, Surface Pro. Um, and now we have cell phones that are as big as a small tablet. So yeah. I think, as uh, you mentioned, I, I think the tablet's going out, in, including the iPad. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about some news that came out today. Um, oh. Did you see the tariffs that... Uh, president trump placed on china oh i like when we get political so yeah yes. it it sounds like there are a ton of tariffs but nothing on apple how is that possible yeah so um i find that fascinating so donald trump uh, announced 200 billion dollars of more tariffs on china but apple products and the components that go into them are going to be excluded And I wondered for a little bit why this uh, love affair from President Trump and Apple, because Tim Cook's actually a well-known Democrat. He is not uh, a Republican, and I don't think he's funded uh, President Trump's campaigns anywhere in the past. So why this uh, special favor for Apple? Well, I started doing some research, and I was reminded of some changes that happened just recently. So Apple had been technically headquartered in Ireland, and I think they technically still are. And Ireland has had very low taxes, um, business taxes, and so it was a good business move for Apple to be headquartered in Ireland. Well, uh, President Trump accused them of being non-American for being this very American company, but yet headquartered in Ireland, And so he was calling out Apple and saying, you're un-American, you're unpatriotic. What are you doing in Europe and on a tiny little island? And um, with the announcement of the tax cuts that came into effect earlier this year for businesses, it actually dropped the back taxes that Apple would pay uh, by 50 percent. Oh, wow. that's big. They went from owing $78 billion in back taxes to the American government to $39 billion. And so it it now makes economic sense. I think that's almost on par to what they were paying in Ireland. And for moving back to the United States, that says, okay, President Trump, I'm now an American and I'm proud to be American. And They're bringing that money back to the U.S. And so that ingratiated Apple into President Trump and his administration's graces. And now look at the break they're getting. Huge break. Big tax break. Do you think that's going to make them uh, a lot more competitive on the international stage? And is it fair, right? So President Trump is all about renegotiating NAFTA and trade deals all across the world. And he's pushing hard and hitting companies and countries, I should say, with tariffs. Is it fair that his American company is spared the same tariffs that he's placing on non-American companies? What do you think? You know, that's hard to say. I can tell you it's exciting to go to other countries and to see people using American products like Apple and like the iPhone. Um, I I don't know if it is fair. And uh, the whole business tax thing, I mean, I I think it's good in a way because it it makes it a lot more competitive to, to do business here in the States. And I do see a lot of people going overseas a lot. Um, but at the same time, um, you know, I know my taxes this year are going up because of it. Um, really? To fill that gap. They are. Yeah. And that's so not, personal taxes going my up? My personal taxes are going up. Oh. Not by a lot, just by about $3,000. Um, it's complicated. Huh? It has to do with um, 
a change that they did on um, the way that the property tax um, relief works at the end of the year. Anyway, I calculated it out, and, and with these tax drops, I'm actually paying 3000 more, so that'll go towards Apple's pocket, I guess, right? Again. Because they're the ones that are saving. You um, know so what it, you could do with your $3,000? What's that? An iPhone 10s Max <laughs> and a Series 4 Apple Watch. For, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's repeal the taxes so that I can get the, the watch and the Max. Um, it, it is a little strange to, to put money in pockets of big big businesses and, and take it away from property taxes here in California. But I, you know, it's it, if it helps the economy, I guess it's good. I, I'm, I'm pretty neutral on that. I, I don't have any strong opinions either way. All right. Well, let's get some more strong opinions and let's get political. Political. Okay, that was bad. I've been trying to wanting to do that all week. So Google has uh, gotten political with Russia. And uh, what they've done is uh, the government of Russia has asked them to pull some videos of Putin's biggest critic. And they argued that uh, they pulled it because it's campaigning. There's a law in Russia that says you're not allowed to campaign earlier than 24 hours before the election. I guess that's to save on money and bothering people with so much or perhaps to help the guy who's in charge right now. Uh, but in any case, it's illegal. And so the government of Russia claimed that their biggest competitor, this was campaigning. Meanwhile, um, the individual, uh, his last name is Navalani. He stated, look, I'm just doing these YouTube advertisements trying to get people out to protest against Putin's latest um, rising of retirement age. He's raising uh, women's retirement age to 60 years old and men's to 65. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much on par with what we're seeing here in North America. But keep in mind, life expectancy in Russia is still only at 71. Really? So, yeah, it's significantly lower. So it's kind of like saying, okay, uh, you're not allowed to retire until you're at 90% of your life expectancy. <laughs> so what do you think? Um, do you think Google was right to side with the government and say, okay, you know, this looks like he's campaigning, let's pull it? Um, or do you feel that uh, with freedom of speech, you should be able to get on YouTube and call on your supporters to demonstrate a, an issue that you feel is relevant. Absolutely. I think you should be able to, to call on supporters to help you out. You know, it's fascinating, Matt, that they're only up to 71 years old. Yeah. Um, that's terrifying. Is it just the, the labor that they do or is it the types of food that they're eating or the lifestyle? Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I was surprised, too. I actually thought it was more like 65. And the reason why I thought it was 65 is when I was living in Russia, that's actually where it was in the mid-90s. So I, I did some research on it, and you can see a graph where uh, they actually went to their lowest since the 60s in the mid-90s. Understandably, that was when the government was collapsing and being replaced over and over again. It was a very politically unstable time. The mafia was running a lot of the show, and uh, I could get into a lot of details of crazy things I saw with mafia there. But um, also, there is a very unhealthy lifestyle. Uh, I don't know how many lard sandwiches I ate, right? Like Caladietz. <laughs> Caladietz is a um, – now I can't even speak English. It's it's a delicacy. That's the English word I was looking for, right? It's It's basically meat jello with chunks of knuckle in it. Um, you know, Sign that, me up. that can't be healthy. So heart and stroke issues are a big part of the life expectancy in Russia. There is a lot of heavy smoking. If you look at the smoking percentages in Russia versus the West, um, North America by far is actually ahead of even Europe. I'll have to confirm that by doing some research. But just my personal experience walking around Europe versus North America um we just smoke less. Also, vodka is a huge deal in Russian culture. In fact, it's how you shake hands and do business. You drink 100 milliliters of vodka to seal a deal. Um, sure, they'll shake hands, but when you drink that 100 milliliters of vodka, you've agreed. That's your stamp on the document. 
So with the way that alcohol is ingrained in the culture and cigarettes and uh, eating a lot of fatty foods, heart and stroke's a big issue. So well, it's yeah. great to hear that at least they have some kind of a form of social security, though I, I wasn't aware that they did. And so you're saying that um, that's that's what they're waiting for is, is the payment from the government, right? Like you could just retire anytime if you wanted to, if you were rich enough over there. Right. right. So this is when you could start collecting your pension. Um, and that's actually exactly what they call it. They don't call it old age. It's actually just called pension. And when you retire, you're called a pensioner. That's the direct translation of what it is. And it's a big deal because during um, the Soviet era, of course, uh, all pensioners were taken care of. And it was a much earlier age. I believe it was in your early 50s, men maybe 55. I'll have to double check that. And then you could collect your pension. So it's a significant bump. And, of course, uh, the uh, Putin's critics are trying to, to rally and um, cause them some issues. So, so I wanted to, to just talk about Google real quick. I know you had brought yeah. them up um, with Russia. Did you hear about how they're actually changing settings remotely um, on people's phones without their permission? Yeah, so this had to do with Android Pie. And um, some people still have it in beta. Some people actually have the official rollout. Uh, but it looks like what Google was doing is they were testing some settings and accidentally released it to a lot of people. In fact, uh, they went to Reddit to explain what happened and apologize. And this is what they say, uh, quote, an internal experiment to test battery saving features that was mistakenly rolled out to more users than intended. We have now rolled battery saver settings back to default. Please configure to your liking. So um, your battery saver came on. But that can be bad. What if you rely on apps that are shut down when battery saving gets set on? Uh, or, and then that can affect you not getting your notifications. It could affect your job. Uh, it could affect um, anything where you need immediate communication. Um, but I guess the bigger question is, is that scary? It is that scary. That Google can else, shut you down remotely? What else are they doing? Yeah, if they can change your settings on your phone, are they also looking at where you are, uh, what you're texting to your friends? I mean, the... Well, do no evil. Oh, right, I forgot. You already <laughs> told us <laughs> last week. Well, you they... know how Uber has a God mode, right, where um, at their company they can look and see where all of the Uber drivers are, where all of the their patrons are, and, uh, you know, if they can do that, what if Google could do that and just see oh, where all of their phones are? It, well, Terrifying. Apple has been doing the same thing for years, especially when they've been throttling your speed to save on battery life, right? Yes. It, it's no surprise that they can do this. Um, is it scary? Sure. Um, are we putting a lot of trust in these companies that we're giving them thousands of dollars for our phones? Absolutely. Uh, how do we feel about it? If we keep buying these devices, I guess we're okay. <laughs> yeah, I guess we're slowly letting them take over our privacy, uh, which kind of bothers me, honestly. I'd, I'd like it to be a hands-off approach. I think once you've purchased your, their equipment, I think they should leave you alone. Well, okay, this brings up the next topic, and I'm really curious to what you think about this as an app developer. So a lot of companies are trying to get away from that ecosystem that both Apple and Google have created specifically around their stores. Mm -hmm. And Fortnite specifically was the big one in the press this last month where they chose not to put Fortnite on uh, Google Play. And instead, you have to go to their servers and download it directly from them. And then that way, they don't have to pay Google the extra fees that they normally would have to. Unfortunately, they're stuck with Apple because Apple has a much more enclosed uh, ecosystem and you can't really get around it. But I'm sure they would have done the same thing with Apple if it was an option. So, I have a lot to say about that. What do that. you think? Yeah, okay, first of all, um, the Google Play Store is getting a lot more intense. Um, just the other day, I was submitting an application to it, and they had someone actually go through my game screen by screen 
And they wrote me an email and said, you need to change this, this, and this. And I've never had that come back from Google before. So I've was had that Apple good? do that. Did um, you like that feedback? I, I did like the feedback. Most of it had to do with their privacy policies and other things. And um, they had some other things they wanted me to change. But I was just shocked that there was somebody in Mountain View that was going through my app and had the time to take a look at it. So they really are upping their security in the Google Play Store, just like Apple did years ago. And so I'm shocked that Android is letting Fortnite just install it using their own ecosystem. Oh, and Apple's that, not. It's I'm it's sorry, Google, and, uh, Google yeah. Play, yeah. And that begs the question, will things like Steam suddenly get on our phones now without having to go through an app store? Because it really is a lot of money that you're giving these companies. Um, I believe it's like 30% of yeah. whatever they purchase. Um, right now, I do freemium things where I make a game for free and then you can purchase items in it, but uh, still 30% goes to them. And uh, so mostly I like to get my revenue from advertising, um, which still gives a chunk to Google. So either way, you can't get away from it. Um, but if I was a large uh, corporation that had created Fortnite, I mean, they're going to make a lot more money this way. And there's a lot more Android users than you'd think, because a lot of people in Korea play Fortnite, a lot of Android users over there in that country. And so I, I think that was a smart business move on their side. And I think this is a slippery slope for Google. I think if they don't get in on a lasso immediately, it's going to slip away from them and more companies are going to do it. So this also brings up another issue that was actually in the news this week is um, some security experts are actually quite concerned about people leaving that safer ecosystem of Google Play to go and get apps. And I know on a jailbroken phone, and maybe you don't even need to jailbreak iPhones anymore, you, you can do. still go get apps. Uh, okay, so you have to jailbreak, which removes your warranty but you can still go get apps outside of that um, protected space. So uh, Top 10 VPN actually commissioned a study uh, about malware found on Android devices. And um, surprise, surprise, most of the malware that's affecting devices right now are tied to Fortnite. And oh. it's, yeah, I mean, in fact, that's what they found. In fact, I think, I don't think it was most, I think it was all the malware that's causing grief right now is people going looking for Fortnite, looking for Fortnite apps that can maybe give them an edge in the game. And they're downloading these apps onto their phone and giving them access to um, record and upload their phone calls, uh, read their text messages, read their emails, access their photos. I mean, this is scary stuff. I mean, that's exactly what malware is there to do, is to steal your personal information and then benefit from it by selling it or blackmailing. I mean, it's it's scary stuff. Well, not just that, but they could also put a bit miner on your phone and take away all of your processing speed and uh, just, you know, mine their own bitcoins while you're trying to use your phone and you'd have no idea why it's going so slow. And your data goes through the roof. Your data's <laughs> through the roof. <laughs> I, I actually like that you have that protected ecosystem. Um, I remember even when we had Windows 95, Windows 3.1, and, you know, all the time people at school were telling me, hey, Dan, can you come over and fix my computer because I have a virus? And so I would constantly be formatting people's hard drives and reinstalling Windows. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was a big problem in the late 90s, early 2000s. Um, you would have just people coming up to me all the time and asking me to do that. The problem was all the time they were downloading stuff that they shouldn't have and uh, it would install the malware and it looks like we're seeing that again with phones this time. Um, I have one more thing I wanted to bring up about Fortnite before we finish. Did you hear about the divorce statistics through Fortnite? <laughs> yes. <laughs> what was that about? <laughs> this was just an article I found that I thought was hilarious and um, there was a company that started mining data from divorce courts and uh, was looking at the reasons why people are getting divorced. They found over 200 divorces within the last year or so blamed Fortnite addiction as a reason for uh, divorce. That's and hilarious. It is hilarious. I mean, they specifically said a game. They didn't say, oh, my spouse spends too much time playing video games. They said, my spouse spends too much time on Fortnite. <laughs> so, 
I wonder how many of them were women. Zero. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Maybe two. It may be two out of 200. So um, this is interesting. Now, digital addiction is a real thing. I mean, I hadn't heard of Fortnite being to blame for in the past for divorces, but I actually do know people who have gotten divorced over uh, digital addiction, video games, pornography. Um, these are things that you can definitely be addicted to on uh, your technology. And it's now actually been added. Digital addiction has been added to the three. So it's now the four most common causes of divorce. So right up there to addiction to drugs, alcohol and gambling. Now it's addicted to digital media. Fascinating. Well, that was a great podcast, Matt. We will see you guys next week. Um, check us out on YouTube. You can also check us out on Twitter at Tech, to Sh Tech Time Show PC. And uh, we will hit you up next week. Talk at you next week.